Rehearsing in the Municipal Culture Centre in Baranovici, Galassi's Mesta have a new song to share. We wrote this literally the morning after we found out we weren't going. By 11am, it was ready. State TV chose this band to represent Belarus at the Eurovision Song Contest in Rotterdam. But their song, I'll Teach You, was rejected as too political. Some saw it as celebrating police violence against protesters who disputed President Alexander Lukashenko's re-election last year. The singer says that's absurd. It's a normal, light-hearted, quite ironic song. Were those guys so scared that no one's allowed to make fun of them? Dimitri says the song is not about the police, but is a form of social satire. He takes a critical stance towards the protesters. They didn't even wait for the official results, and already on election day they'd filled up the town square. Seems people can't wait to see what happens and take a measured decision. And that's what our songs criticise. Dimitri didn't want to say whether he felt many people in Baranovici shared his anti-protest views. Research suggests a sizable minority does, but that the majority of Belarusians sympathised with the movement to oust Lukashenko. It was the biggest challenge to his rule in 26 years, but police cracked down hard and the protests dwindled. In Baranovici, the opposition's red and white colours can still be seen, if you know where to look. But anti-regime graffiti is swiftly painted over. Opposition leaders proposed to reignite the movement on the 25th of March starting with a mass honking of car horns. But it was a bit timid. Under new rules, you can lose your licence for one unjustified hoot. Police flooded the capital and made sure no protest could happen. In the evening, they arrested anyone they saw trying to film them, plus would-be protesters and random passers-by. Though, in fact, relatively few people even tried to go out. I don't want to risk going out on behalf of the people who really need change when those people aren't protesting themselves. He means factory workers. In August, Anton and others had offered to pay their wages if they went on strike against Lukashenko. They believed us and started to walk out of the factories. I thought, that's it, we've won. And then they were all driven back in. Anton was at all the protests for the first four months, an emotional roller coaster. The goodbye to Roman Bondarenko, that was hard. Bondarenko was one of at least four activists who've been killed. We cried at home. And then we went there to cry together. I'd say about half the country is taking antidepressants at the moment. But we haven't given up. We're trying to cope with it. And in any case, we believe in a bright future. But right now, it's very hard. With mass protests impossible, many Belarusians are finding alternative ways to express themselves. In the historic town of Novakrudak, a small group has gathered, as every week. Oleg looks around anxiously as policemen approach. Just two of them today. Last week there were more of them than us. About 15 or 20 of them, they arrested us all. They told us that the town centre is now an extremist centre. That's a word they used, isn't it? And that we're gathering here and they know why we do it. And so they forbid us from gathering here and do all they can to stop us. And why do you gather here, actually? To go on excursions. It is, you might say, a protest that dare not speak its name. Mm -hmm. 
This week, the group makes it up to the town's ruined 14th century castle without getting arrested. And then joins a seminar about developing tourism. Without waiting for Lukashenko to fall, people have realized they can use their newfound community spirit to achieve things at the local level. Even that, though, is apparently a cause for suspicion. The police officers lurked outside throughout the meeting.